All right, so what's happening? Nine Spiral, you too, fair use. Uh, this is live for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and a parody which doesn't infringe upon my copyright, at least I think. Uh, truly, this is a content notice. Uh, you can contact the owner prior to making a copyright claim. All right, warning sign under Title 17 USC, Section 107. Let go. All right, what's happening? Say now, nine spiral. All right, pay me no attention, man. I'm just reconning, reconning, or uh, surfing the wave, right? This is what we do. All right, we're digging on Mount Sierra, right? The possessions of Esau, right here in your backyard in Amaru Khan, right? You see, I had a feeling about this long time ago. And we gonna connect some some dots, right? Nice. And we gonna find out who it really. Well, we gonna find out why the Most High gave the Sierra Nevada Mountains to Esau, right? Uh, your brother in Israel. Those that are confederate against you along with Moab, Ishmaelites, 
the Hagrites, Hivites, so on and so on, to this very day, right? Shout out to Khan Kurmio. Great work, great work, son. Mm-hmm. And we're going to find out all about these mountains. We're going to connect some dots. Um, it first came to my attention a couple of years ago. And I started digging on it. Because of the spelling, right? Horace Butler, right? Word the coin drop. The three-letter rule. I mean, a uh, one-letter rule, right? So what? Yeah. Put that motherfucker out right there. Right. Right. Except they do it like this, right? You see that? <laughs> yeah, man, that's what they do. That's how they try to trip us up, y'all. That's how they try to trip us up. Uh-huh. All right, let's pop off. Alright, somebody mentioned in the comment section about the music being too loud. I don't know, y'all let me know. See if we can tone it down just a little bit. Alright. Bam! Alright. Let's get into it. Do the run of me. Second chapter. We're going one. Alright, we're gonna see what it do. Alright, let's go. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Most High spoke to me, and we skirted Mount Seir for many days. All right, let's get that again. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. All right, all right, nine spiral. <clears throat> We're gonna make a quick stop by uh, Conquer Mill again. We are all on the same street, you know. Um, and so I can just pop up anywhere, man. Or uh, I might be down the street at Drops, uh, across the street, Yourself the Reels, down the street, Natural by Law, up the street, Copper Color Creation. You feel me? We all over, man. Yo, Huntington down there, too. You feel me? This is what we do. My jigging them. Come on now. All right, Con. Now, you were saying California uh, is referenced as a what? A lot as an island. Okay. And on a lot of these old maps, you know, California is, you know, found, you know, drawn as an island. All right. So this map right here is from Johannes Bing's Boom, 1650. All right. And it's the island of California. All right. Come on, come on. No doubt. No doubt. Uh, this other map. Uh, it's the codfish map of North America by Herman Moll, 1720. Now, see, this is the one I was talking about. All right, right and uh, we can see again California is an island. And what I want you to pay close attention to is, because I'm going to mention this in the video, All right. is look what we see in between California and Mexico and, you know, the rest of the United States. Who's we that? see the Gulf of California, of course, right? But also where we see the Red Sea, oh, right? Oh, the, the Red, Red sea. sea. Got it. Whoop! Got it. All right, here we go. Uh huh. Right. So, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, we connect the dots, right? We connect the dots. All right. I wish I could move this uh, shit right here, man. What the fuck? Nah, I wasn't trying to do all that. Bam. All right, all right. So we're talking right about here, right? All right. See here, we got a four corner region, Kingdom of Prester John, right? Moab, Nim, Moab, right? Okay, we just made, we just connecting dots, man. That's all we're doing right now. This is like, this is not nothing uh, too educational, you know. This is just pretty much connecting dots, man. It's going to be uh, pretty much common sense. I promise you that. Well, it's something special about that four corner region, right? It's something special about that four corner region. Kingdom of Prester John on older maps. But we're talking about Mount Seir right about up in here. All right. All right, we're back. We're back. Okay, let's get that again. Verse 1. Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea as the Most High spoke to me. And we did what? Skirt it. You see, we got to read the book, man. We did what? Skirt it. Mount Sierra or the Sierra Nevada Mountains for many days, right? All right. All right. So here's the approximate, right, location. All right. So we're talking, if I can just kind of zoom in right here. Okay. So the children of Israel skirted around this mountain, right? Went around about, right? Right? You see that? It went round about. We just get invisibles. All right. And the Most High spoke to me saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And we're going to dig on that. And command the people saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir. And they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully. Do not meddle with them. And I wonder why he told us not to meddle with our own brethren. We're going to dig on it, but let's dig on northward, right? Let's get it. All right, con, con. We're in the uh, Strong's Concordance. Hebrew and Greek lexicon. We're digging on north, right? Uh huh. Now, if you're not familiar with uh, Hebrew in general, any word, right, can come up under many derivatives. You see that? So one word is not going to mean just one thing. Uh, it's the same thing with the uh, uh, ancient Mayan uh, hieroglyphs, right? One one uh, uh, hieroglyph by itself can mean multiple things. So one dot can mean something different. You add another dot, that same picture, hieroglyph, can mean something totally different. You add a third dot, it changes it into something else, right? It's the same shit we see here. So we're not going to worry about... Um, cardinal directions as we know it because we know that it is wrong so go dig on hebrew uh cardinal directions uh surf the wave man all right so i'm gonna point up i'm gonna point out some things right it could be hence hinder right hinder part you have skirted this mountain long enough 
it's our hinder. Right? Backwards. Time to come. It could have been the most high saying, go. It's time for y'all to go, right? The time has come for you to go get your land. Cyprus? Or Cyprus-like, huh? And we know about the uh, the biblical tree, the Cypress tree, right? Which is found all over uh, uh, um, the Americas. So you see that? North could mean Cyprus or Cyprus light. Let's dig on it. Come on, come on, come on. All right. So, okay. So you do have Cyprus trees in Nevada. Okay. They do have Cyprus trees. Like I said, pretty much they all over. Uh, which is another one of the many signs that will let you know that everything that happened in Scripture happened over here and it wasn't that long ago. You know, that's another video. Okay. All right, here we go. Okay, so, 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 so. They skirt it, right? Turn northward or go hinder towards the cypress trees, which are in Nevada, right? Because I would like to think that this is the general uh oh this is the general area right here right where they trying to get right Judah let's go all right here we go we back <clears throat> all right where we were man somebody rang the doorbell okay here we at here we, here we go where we at where we at Okay, he said, do not meddle with them, right? Okay, we're going to find that out. We're going to see why. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land. And I don't think we would have wanted any of their land. We're going to see why. We're going to dig on it. I got you. I got you. No, not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir, or the Sierra Nevada Mountains, to Esau as a possession. You shall buy food from them with money that you may eat. And you shall also buy mem, water, right? Does Mount Seir has water? Let's go. Yeah, man, good mem. Yeah, they got some good mem. Good mem. What that mem? That that mem, man. Look at that good mem. They got good mem. Mem. <laughs> Wata. Let go. I'm just looking at their mem. That's all. Look at that good mem. So they had good mems, right? So the Most High wouldn't have told us to buy a uh, water from them if it wasn't no good mem, right? We all know where mem comes from. These trees, right? Or if, mountains, if you want to call them that. All right. All right. So we got that good mem from our brother and, and them, right? And it's funny we had to buy it, right? We supposed to be brothers and shit, but we had to buy mem. I don't know. Y'all let me know. All right. Verse 7. For the Most High, your power has blessed you in all the work of your hands. He knows you're trudging through the great uh, this great wilderness, Shalaki, Shalaki. These 40 years, the most high, your power has been with you and you have lacked nothing, right? And when you pass beyond our brethren, right? Our brethren, we ain't talking about no white people. You know, that's beyond me, man. I don't, I don't understand it. It's beyond me. It's regurgitated bullshit. Y'all need to let it go. Uh, talking to y'all campers out there, y'all, your Howard Shaw folks, y'all need to kill that shit. I don't understand that. All right, away from the role of the plane, away from Ela and Ezion Jeber, 
a Gieber. Isaiah Gieber. I like that better. We turn and pass by way of the wilderness of Moab. Do we got a Moab for 500? <laughs> Bam! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, buddy. Uh-huh. Yeah, we got a Moab, right? Word to cure meal. We're just talking about the Yarden, the Colorado, the Yarden, right? And so you see what's going on, man. This shit is getting too easy. Y'all done fucked up now. Y'all done fucked up. We gonna dig on them damn mountains. I see why he gave Esau them damn mountains. We didn't want no pause to that shit going on over there. All right, come. All right, we're back. Appreciate you for rocking with nine spirals, smooth jazz. No coffee, just kush and water. Mim. Sometimes you gotta switch it up. Then the Most High said to me, Do not harass Moab, nor contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Imim, the Imim, have dwelt there in times past, right? A people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. So we're talking giants, right? They were also regarded as giants. Like the Anakim. But the Moabites call them Emim. The Horites, right? Alright, I need y'all to write that word down. We're gonna dig on it. Doggone it. Boy, 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 boy. Look what I have found. The Horites, right? Formerly dwelt in Seir. So, the Horites, right? Formerly dwelt in the Sierra Nevada mountains. We're gonna dig on it. But the descendants of Esau uh, disposed of them. And, you know, that's my words. Disposed of them and destroyed them uh, from before them and dwelt in their place. So Esau tangled with these Horites and dwelt in their place. I think something... Uh, other than that was happening I think it was some congregating going on between Esau and these Horites we're going to dig on it uh, the Horites that is just as Israel did to the land of their possession which the Most High gave them alright let's go alright we're in punk ass Wikipedia and we're digging on the Horites right now, right off the bat, you know what I'm saying, you see the, um, you know, the correlation, right? See, you got to get in the Torah, man. You got to get into Yasher, right? I'm pretty sure we can find these Horites in Yasher, right? And and, and pretty much uh, keep on connecting these dots. According to Archibald, whatever that is, the Horites have been identified uh, with references in Egyptian inscriptions to Kar, formerly translated as Harry. Harry, okay, write that word down. Okay, we got Horites and Harry. Canaan is also associated. And we're talking Canaan, we're talking nothing more than 
more bites. Canaanites, more bites. Just like gold and quartz crystal, they run together. All right, we're just digging on it. The ancestry of Sierra, the Horite, is not specified. And we're going to find out why. I think I know why. What's that little wrong time? Uh, uh. Okay. All right, I'm just uh, doing a little wave. So, all right, I'm out. All right, we're back in strong concordance. I wanted to get some more of these defin uh, definitely. I think I seen something else. I just be doing this shit real time, man, putting it together, man. That's how we do a drop nation. It's nothing. All right, so north could have meant, okay, turn, right? And go hither to a gloomy and unknown place, right? You see, they had to go get their land back. Our ancestor had to go get the land back, right? Go hinder, right? Towards the Cyprus. To a gloomy and unknown place, right? You don't know about it. And it's all kind of giants and shit, so it's gloomy. So go take your shit back. You see what's going on? Mm-hmm. All right, con, con, man, look here, man. Uh, um, you know, once you're in the vibration, man, and once you're rocking with your parents above, or your mother and your father above, you know, and especially Big Mama, Big Mama ingredients, man. She just sprinkle them down, man. And, and, and all these things that we're uncovering, right? And digging up, you know what I'm saying? It's easy. Because we in that frequency, that vibration. So I, I stumbled upon uh, this op right here, man. Good op. Uh, what's the name of his channel? Thora Custodia. You know, kind of like Thora, but it's Thora. Thora Custodian. Y'all check him out. Uh, he pretty much, yeah, he pretty much uh, uh, bridged the gap that I was trying to, uh, uh, you know, create. So he bridged that for me, and we're going to dig on it. Pop off, pop. All right, shallow on my old praises to the... Let me tell you something, man. Y'all some lying motherfuckers, man. Y'all lied about a whole bunch of shit. It is so much... It's going on right over here in Amaru Khan that screams uh, uh, Old Testament. And just like I said, this shit didn't happen that long ago, right? Word to Anatoly Fomenko, right? Renowned uh, Russian chronographer and mathematician, right? Scalinger, uh, his work, you know what I'm saying, is many others, right? This shit wasn't that long ago. Y'all lying about a lot of shit, man. All right. Yahweh, Yahweh, God, Yahweh, Yasha, the Redeemer and Savior of Israel. Uh, this is going to be volume four in regards of uh, Esau and I being a so-called white man. And today I'm going to be dealing with, uh, with the cave dwelling aspect of the cave dwelling. All right, seems like I got hijacked. Give me one second. All right. All right, we're going to get that again. That was a first. I never seen that one before. I never seen that one before. Uh oh, stop chasing my IP address. Y'all know who y'all is. Let go. One thing about it, you ain't going to stop no show. All right, shallow on my old praises to the Yahweh, y'all go. Well, you better ask the most high about me. I'm something like Phineas. Eliezer, your ass. Oh, Yahweh, Yasha, the Redeemer and Savior of Israel. Uh, this is going to be volume four 
in regards of uh, Esau and I being a so-called white man. And today I'm going to be dealing with, uh, with the cave dwelling aspect of the cave dwelling. Y'all ain't doing nothing but validate me. I ain't never seen no shit like that. That's the first. All y'all do is validate me in front of my goddamn subscriber. Let go. Oh, the Wi-Fi jamming me. All right, give me a minute. All right, took me a minute. I'm back. Woo! <laughs> hey, man, some of y'all know, man. Some of my subscribers know, boy. They put me through hell, boy. They don't want this information to get out, but they can't stop it. You see what I'm saying? They would like to have you believe that they run shit, but they don't run shit. Bitch, I'm relentless. All right, Shalom, my old praises do the Yahweh, Yahweh, all Yahweh, Yasha, the Redeemer and Savior of Israel. Uh, this is going to be volume four in regards of uh, Esau and I being a so-called white man. And today I'm going to be dealing with, uh, with the cave dwelling aspect of the cave dweller. Let go! On all these camps out there, all uh -huh. these other Israelites who subscribed to this falsehood that uh, white people are the Edomites. Right. Dumb shit. Dumb shit right off the rip, right? Let me show you something. All right, I'm back. I had to find a, a screenshot of this uh, because my internet uh, fucking up. All right, so we're in um, the works of Flavius Josephus, right? Book two. Accordingly, Esau went out a hunting, but Rebecca, thinking it proper to have the supplication made for obtaining the favor of Hawa to Jacob, because uh, Jacob was chosen by Hawa, right? And that without the consent of Isaac, bid him kill kids of the goats and prepare a supper. So Ya'aquab obeyed his mother according to all her instructions. Now when the supper was got ready, that's how I read, he took a goat's skin and put it about his arm that by reason of its hairy roughness, he might by his father be believed to be Esau, for they being what? Twins. And in all things else alike, differed only in this thing. Esau had a condition, a physical condition, right? He was born hairy. Now look at your baby picture and tell me if you don't come out red. Everybody coming out red because you're coming out the womb. But then that's when melanin begins to take over, right? For they, being twins, and in all things else alike, differed only in this thing. Huh? Well, the Edomites, they like um, uh, to utilize this analogy that uh, uh, being the fact that the Edomites were dwelling in Mount Sears, that they're, they're the original cave dwellers, which in all sense, it will, uh, according to what they're teaching, that they will also apply to the Europeans or the so-called white race. But I'm going to go into Torah. Let's go. And show you on how the Edomites were not the original cave dwellers. Come on, where did G-Dads make Torah great again? Let's go. The Edomites were not the original cave dwellers. And the so-called white man or the so-called white race were not the original cave dwellers. Come on, come on. But the Horites. The Horites. Which was another quote-unquote so-called black nation. Melanin individuals or people of color. They were the original cave dwellers. Come on. So I'm going to go over here first. And Strong's Hebrew Dictionary of the Bible. Let's go. And I'm going to look up the word I'm a Horite 
in our language. Let's see what it says. Right? So I'm gonna go ahead and look for um, uh, Strong's number 27. Come on, find it, man. Find it. Find 52. it, man. Come on, let's get it. And we gonna get to the bottom of this. Yeah, let's break down the high jump. Uh, let's see. Let go, let go. I got you. All right. Uh huh. Strong's number 2752. Let's get it. Hooray. Mm -hmm. From 2356. And it says, What? It says, Hold on a minute. Let's get that. Where am I right now? We see that cave dweller. It says, A cave dweller. Bam! Cave dweller. Uh huh. Troglodyte, a chloride. Oh, y'all done fucked up now. You know you done fucked up now. You know that, don't you? Now, see now. See now. See now, I do me a, You bloodthirsty son of a guns. You know you done fucked up now. You see, I went looking for this word right here. I didn't get no hits. But when I focus on this right here, troglodyte. Say it with me, write it down. Troglodyte. Huh? Let's go. All right, good afternoon. I'm here on Wednesday, October 9th. My name is Tom Yamaron. And I'm here with Russ. Russ from Santa Clara. Russ from Santa Clara. Okay, and Russ is going to recount for us the evening, the night of September 19th, 2013. All right, let's give it up for Russ. What's going on, Russ? Uh, fair use, my guy. Fair use? Fair use, yeah. Um, and Russ, why don't you just tell us what happened that night? Come on, well, Russ. We were up... Uh, in the Cottonwood Lakes Basin at a lake called South Fork Lake. And uh, the reason we, we took this trip was to hopefully uh, help me catch a golden trout, which I had never caught. And I'm, a, I'm an avid fisherman. I love to, love to fish. And one of the reasons that uh, we went up there was, was specifically to catch my, my first golden trout. So we got up to the lake. We had uh, set up set up camp. There was three tents, four of us, myself and Don and Chikawa were in one tent. His brother Jerry was in another one, and a fellow named Bob was in one of the other ones. We were within, I would say, 15 yards uh, of each other and uh, overlooking the lake, uh, probably 250 to 300 feet from the water's edge, and uh, up on a little knoll. We walked down. There was a little knoll next to us off to the right, uh, to the south, and uh, went up on this little ridge, maybe 30, 40 feet high. And uh, unfortunately, I had some issues early on a couple of years ago and started having prostrate difficulties and uh, developed into surgery, etc. So I have to get up at night a little bit more than normal. So. The night we were there, the first night, uh, it was about 11.30, and I got up to uh, go to the bathroom and uh, got out of the tent, full moon, it's just beautiful out. It was a, it was a harvest moon, and uh, you could see the lake, all the mountains. It was, when you looked at, out to the west and I looked at the, uh, the moon, it was probably sitting at about, oh, maybe on a, uh, on a clock, I would say maybe at about 10.30, maybe 10, 10.30 elevation as you look at it. And uh, I walked maybe, oh, 15 yards away from the uh, from the tent over to this big bristlecone pine tree and stood there and began to, uh, began to urinate in the 
out of the corner of my eye to the right, and I'm facing the lake, and out of the corner of my eye to the light, I saw a shadow. I look up, and I saw this figure walking down off the ridge line, and uh, wasn't sure what it was. Kind of turned away and looked back, thinking that I possibly had saw something that I didn't see. And uh, at that point, I realized that it, that it was a real figure. It was it was a big figure. And the way it was walking, I, I looked at it. And I could I could see it outlined against the, the moon in that. And I, the first indication I had that was very tall, probably at least seven foot or, or better, and uh, probably at the, at the same instance I realized that what I was seeing was a, a Sasquatch, and I, and I was like, it's hard to describe it, but my body just, and, I, and I, I'm feeling it right now, every time I discuss it, and I don't talk about it that much, except with a couple of friends and my family, but uh, my whole body just, it just feels different than anything I've ever experienced. And a good feeling, not a not a bad feeling, not a not a feeling that I was frightened or or uh, shocked or anything. I'd say shocked. Yeah, I was a little shocked, but I looked at it and it was just amazing. I watched this uh, this animal walking uh, in such a way that it, that it that it just glided over these rocks. And this terrain that we were on um, had it was all rocks very little dirt in fact when we put the, the tent pegs in and we had to pick spots out that was like a little softer where we get the tent pegs into the tent because when when the wind came up it would probably blow the tent away but other than that it was all rocky bowl, uh, bowling ball like rocks which were I could never walk on them at, at, even in the moonlight without kind of staggering around and everything and this animal just kind of kind of glided over it and I, I, I visualized that with what I was seeing was a uh, uh, a very big, muscular NBA black basketball player, mm -hmm. and no racial overtone involved in that and everything. But but it was uh, that was the body shape. That was mm -hmm. the body shape. And I noticed that the head was uh, from the front of the head where the uh, the eyes are went back a little bit. I didn't see uh, an abnormal amount of, of hair on the uh, on the animal, which you know, in the past you always think of Sasquatch. It's like you know Chewbacca on uh, Star Wars. Well, no, it wasn't like that. His head didn't have a big bunch of hair. It was it was nice. It was a, a very attractive looking figure and uh what was the lighting like i don't mean to interrupt but what, what was the lighting uh from that position of the moon at 10 30 in the sky like a spotlight down on it yeah i wouldn't say but the, everything was lit up i mean you could walk if you paid attention to where you were walking i would have no trouble walking it was that that light out right and uh and i could see the figure i could see him outlined and after I reported it first to uh, to the ranger station in Lone Pine, and then they referred me to another person who called me a couple mm -hmm. days later, a girl named Joy from the Bureau of Land Management, mm -hmm. who was very nice. She asked me something that I hadn't thought of, which was, how did you determine the height of the, of the animal? Well, I had forgotten, but my friend Donnie, I asked him about that. My friend Donnie, who was with me, he said, do you remember that big boulder that was behind it, behind the tent? Mm -hmm. And he said that that boulder was probably, probably five foot, I believe is what he said in, in, in height. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw the animal uh, coming down off the ridge line, it walked behind the boulder, went past, and the boulder was probably... Going to start it again. I can see the, the indicator that it was. We are recording. Okay, very, we were recording. Okay, great. So you the the boulder. That was a fucking blooper. All right, let go. Yeah, it you was and thought about, about, about here, so up above that. So I'm figuring at least seven, probably closer to eight feet. Eight um, feet. Okay, my man say he glided. 
<laughs> right? And we're going to see that. I got you. It's the nine. All right? Now we see why. Right? Give me one second. All right. Come, come. My bad, my bad. I'm back. It's the nine, right? All right. So uh, he said glided. Right? And I'm, I'm thinking he said, you know, uh, less hair. Right? And I'm going to go into the book of Yashir, man, see if I can back this up and do a part two. Uh, this is very interesting, right? Uh, and you, we do see evidence of uh, uh, some manipulation, uh, uh, DNA manipulation going on. Again, you know, Kanan and them, right? They, they've always dealt with uh, fallen angels. Moab has always dealt uh, with fallen angels. Uh, Ham's descendants have always dealt with fallen angels right and so uh that's why hawashiwa uh, had to get rid of these uh, uh creations and giants now do some of them still exist around hey we're digging on it real time now we see why <laughs> the most High gave mount seer right uh to esau Right, they pretty much took it over uh, from these Horites, right? Uh, but it is easy to see and plain to see that these Horites, these Triglodites, still exist today in Mount Sierra. All right. All right, we're back. We're digging on Mount Sierra. The Sierra Nevada Mountains Uh as I conceive in my own understanding, right? Again, we ain't got to agree on the same things, but we connect dots at Drop Nation. Uh, so surf the wave with us, right? All right, here we go. treat for you tonight okay, and go. I'm going to be talking about the Sierra Sounds by Ron Moorhead. Okay. So back in the early 70s, Ron and I think it was like five other hunter friends of his, mm -hmm. they would go up to this location that, well, they don't like to disclose. All I know is that it was in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Mm. It was between Lake Tahoe and Yosemite, gotcha. I believe. Gotcha. And it was about an eight mile trek in, so it was really, it was off the beaten path, very hard to get to, rough terrain, just out in the bush. I guess the guy who was actually recording the sounds, his name was Al Berry, and you know, he did a lot of things to try and prove that it wasn't a hoax. Like he would be going through people's backpacks on the trip looking for like wires and radios to, you know, try and uh-huh and con uh i like to add um uh, i've dug on it man and since then uh since this guy started recording these sounds man uh there have been hundreds right and so i just wanted to put that out there man y'all can dig on it man let's go con find out if they were communicating with another group who mm -hmm. would have been the hoaxers mm -hmm. but nothing was ever found and they were able to capture these sounds like quite often and I guess Ron had traveled out to this location every year since or at least tried to and so his collection of recordings is quite vast mm -hmm. and I have two of them that I'm gonna play for you that Ron sent me himself so I have permission to use them and yeah I don't know they're very very strange all right well shit uh, fair use they go Ron they're super creepy like if I heard these sounds in the wilderness and I was by myself first of all I wouldn't get any sleep right, and on, man, the first the sign of daylight I'd be sound. packing my stuff and right, I'd be getting on. out of there probably they're just 
kind of unsettling. At least I think they are. Like, Ron and his friends must have had balls of steel to be able to, to stick around and to go back year after year. I think they're creepy. So here we go. The first one I'm going to play for you is called Samurai. And I guess it's called that because they believe it has kind of an oriental sound to it. All right. Well, I just think it sounds on. scary. All right, so let's go. here we go. Very weird, right? Dance like the first. Yes, on and let go. <laughs> hey, look here, man. We connecting dots. Let's go. y'all bullshitting man i've been digging on this for a minute uh and come to find out that there are many accounts of these bigfoot sightings all over north america um you know so you know my man's them talking melanated right everything is lining up man Everything is lining up, right? All right. In a letter to the BFRO dated 7th August, 1999, Battle Mountain, Nevada, the anonymous government employee states, I observed an animal wounded by the fire moving on all fours, not like a bear more like an ape. Firefighters captured the animal, contacted the local vet and medical doctor. U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife, Department of Interior, and Bureau of Land Management were on scene. Animal tranquilized and moved to unknown location. Those at scene told not to talk about what they saw. Animal approximately 7.5 feet long or tall, human-like arms and legs, face not... All right, now that correlates with the uh, eyewitness, right? So, okay, you say around by eight feet, right? All right, let's go. Like man or ape, but mixed between genitalia, male, uncircumcised, and human like, hair covering most of body except chest. Chest has hair, but sparse. Hands with sparse hair, palms bare, with five digits with human opposition of thumb and fifth digit. Speech. Attempted to communicate with caregivers once it realized they were attempting to care for it. Multiple burns on hands, feet, legs, and body. Some second and third degree burns. Using rule of nines, approximately 45% of body with burns. Doctor and vet working together providing care and moved it to unknown location locally. This notice given in violation of orders given by BLM, DOI, and DF and W. Witnesses numbered in the area of 30 to 25. Word is out in the government agencies and among the firefighters since an MD was called out. Many thought a firefighter was injured. Please note that I am a government employee of one of the listed agencies fighting brush fires in the wilderness areas of Nevada. Large-scale fire, approximately 70,000 acres burned, and under orders not to disclose information. I believe a cover-up is in the making. People need to know. The animal needs to be kept alive and studied and released in a protected area. A bullshitter. <clears throat> Nah, man, that's a whole abomination, man. Get your ass out of here. All right, let's go. All right, appreciate you for rocking with nine, man. Look here, man. I'm looking to a part two, I think, yeah, yeah. Part two, what y'all think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, let me see, let me see, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't what, what the uh, young kids say now, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, man, we got actual footage. 
uh, of one of these troglodytes. I'm going to call it how I see it. <laughs> troglodyte. Right? All right, troglodyte. Because you had uh, different species, right? You had some maybe uh, more hairy and less hairy. Right? And uh, we're going to call it a day, man. But yeah, definitely, man, uh, part two, man. Y'all let me know if y'all want a part two. All right. Pop off. Wait a minute, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Now, as I conceive in my own understanding, right, it does kind of look like that motherfucker was gliding. All right, let go. Big feet-ass nigga. All right. 